On today's milestone edition of Locked On Senators, it took accelerated patience, but we got him. Sens VP of Hockey Ops, Dave Poulin, is back on the show. And it's an Ottawa Senators game day. They'll face up against Eric Carlson and the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll get into all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1000 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, you can follow the show. We're on social media at Send Central on Twitter, Locked On Dot Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Today is Tuesday, March 12th, and Pilsy, I don't want to say we did it because we're still elevating, we're still going, but a 1,000 episodes is a lot. Yeah, a thousand episodes is insane, Ross. You're going to have to get used to saying episode 1000 and, which is going to be an adjustment, that's for sure. But it just, it looks great down there. The clean 1000, it's our silver stick moment here. We thought about getting silver sticks, but if people don't know, they are very expensive. So we opted uh, against that. But yeah, I just... What a ride it's been to get to episode 1000. And there, there's even more past the thousand episodes as we did, what, 62 episodes of Making Sense of the Sense, powered by Sense Central. And uh, we've come a long way. And I would just like to say we, we couldn't have done any of this without the support of the Sense community, the citizens. We love you guys. We couldn't have done it without Locked On. Definitely, they've been a great, uh, a great spot for us. And we've really found our home here. So I just. I just have so much gratitude and I'm, I feel so blessed that this is what I get to do on a day to day basis. It's amazing. It's a great way to keep us in touch as well. Pillsy, obviously we met back at the college of sports media in 2016 and it's been a long ride since. And the one thing that brought us together, I think we're our first conversation ever was when Mika Zibanejad was traded. Yep. I, I remember that vividly walking down uh, in the streets of Toronto and we were both walking home and we we're like, hey, you're a sense fan, right? Yeah, sense fan. Nice. And then we immediately uh, chopped it up with the Mika's advantage ad trade. So, yeah, that's wild to think that's that's where it all started. That game seven where we, we went to the, the bar in Toronto, game seven, Pittsburgh, Ottawa, and it was just full of sense fans there. It was, uh, yeah, those were simpler days, Pilsy, for sure. But I trust the brains behind the operation now. We we will talk to Dave Poulin in just a few minutes, and he was the only guest that I felt was appropriate for this show. We took a few big swings in terms yeah. of like thinking about, you know, could we swing Eric Carlson with the Pittsburgh Penguins in Ottawa today? But Pooley has been on four times. He was the ninth guest ever on this show and you know i keep track of all these things oh, yeah. and i just felt like it was it was just so appropriate for dave pool and now a member of the sense front office and a big part of it to be that guy on this show so it came together last minute and i, I just man Pooley is the absolute best he really is yeah. he, he's such a good guy and i mean all you have to do is talk to people that worked at tsn with him and you'll get a sense of that but ross before we move on to Pooley. I, I I wanted to I wanted to share a story about the podcast. So wow, let me let me take everyone back because I don't think I've I've mentioned this on, on the show. Um, let's go back to 2020. The season is canceled. You and I are are trying to find things to do, things to talk about, and I remember this. I was I was hunkered down at my cottage and. We were talking about what to do on, what was that, President's Day? Yes. 
No, it was the day of the U.S. election. Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, day of the U.S. election, and Ross called me so fired up. He's like, Pilsy, I got a great idea for this podcast episode. I was like, oh, nice, we need something good, tell me. He's like, we're going to do a draft of all the best American players to play for the Sens, and we're going to make an American-born roster of Sens players on President's Day. And I think I just paused, and I was like, Ross, that it, like... That's a terrible idea. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's a good idea at all. And you're like, okay, you got a better idea. And then another pause, and I was like, so are we doing this snake style, or how are we, like how are we gonna do this? So you can go back and you can find that. I'm sure Ross, that's probably what you're doing right now. Is you can find that episode where Ross and I did a draft of American-born players on President's Day because we were had no idea what to do ross do you you have it up now or do you want me to keep? no i I have another one that's like very similar outstanding outside ottawa is the title it's where we drafted the best players that played for ottawa but were better somewhere else (laughs) (laughs) shout out peter bondra marion gabrick who (laughs) top picks in that one for sure ryan callahan yeah we were we were desperate for uh topics and i remember i was like I, I sat down, I took a lot of thought and I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, we're, we're trying to do a Sens podcast. Uh, it's COVID times. It's very depressing. Everyone's scared what's going on in the world. And I remember I, I called you Ross and I said, look, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we can do this. And I said, we don't even know when hockey's going to start again. We're, we're trying to do a daily podcast about a hockey team, and they're not going to play hockey for hundreds of days. I just, I don't, I don't see how this works. And I, I remember you said, man, we've, we've come too far. And it's only been a couple months at that point, but we've come too far to do this. And you said, it, do, it doesn't feel right to give up right now. And I said, what are we, we can't do drafts of American born players and players that were better outside of Ottawa for hundreds of days. I just, I'm Dude. sorry, man. I think, I, I think this is, this is it. And you, you said, we got to keep going. Like I, it doesn't feel right to give up now. And that was probably what, ep- maybe episode 60 or something. So the only people listening are your mom and family friends, shout out Patty Levitan day one, uh, some central oh, yeah. citizen. And it just, it didn't seem like the momentum was there. It didn't seem like we'd go anywhere. And I got, I got to give all the credit in the world to you, buddy, because uh, you said... I thought you were going to say Pierre Dorian for having the third and fifth overall pick. I mean, that that definitely helped. But uh, I got to give all the credit to you. You you picked me back up. You said, we need to do this now. Everyone else is quitting. We can't quit now. We need to go harder. And we need to dive into the draft. We need to find ways to, to bring excitement to this. Let's bring other Sens fans on. And you had ideas way better than your all American draft. And we kept things going. And if, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for that, we, we wouldn't be here today. So I just want to, uh, I want to take this time to to thank you, Ross, for, for keeping me going, for picking me back up and uh, allowing us to get to this moment because it's been a life changing experience for me. And a a lot of people wouldn't get to enjoy this show if we didn't have that kind of big moment where uh, you, you picked me up and we decided to keep going. So Uh, thanks for that, buddy. Love you. Love you, buddy. It's uh, it's just getting started. I truly believe the best is yet to come as we're now a thousand episodes in 194 postcasts on top of that. And not one single playoff game, but I do believe they're coming and Pilsy, You talk about great ideas. Our first episode after the COVID pause was uh stay at home defenseman where we ranked the stay at home. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, you should be staying at home just like these five defensemen. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And these, these episodes yeah. are all still available. Yeah, you I can find and- them. This is uh, real. We're not making this up. I went and checked out episode one and uh Pilsy to say we've come a long way in terms of our quality. Um, I'm yeah. going to do that as well today. That's awesome. It's it's hilarious. You said we're, we're called up to the big leagues with Locked On and uh, shout out to Locked On and all the citizens out there. All right, enough self-serving, but truly uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys, the citizens. So yep. at the same time, it feels like it would be wrong not to share these moments with you Definitely. guys as well. Um, and I guess we'll peel back the curtain. Pooley had a real busy day. We organized this interview at uh 7:50 central time for 805 so 15 minutes before so we were kind of caught with our hands in the air being like what are what are we going to do today because it is a big moment and then sure enough Pooley comes in sweeps in to save the day so why don't we get to him now you're listening to locked on senators it's your team every day 
Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Mary J's. Mary J's is a locally owned cannabis dispensary in the Ottawa area. Three best friends had the decision like, hey, we want to do something big here. So they worked hard, they grinded, and through hard work and dedication, they now have four stores in the Ottawa area. They got stores in Riverside South, Orleans, Greeley, and Russell. Plenty of opportunities to help you out. And Mary J's has the best and newest products in the market and they're adding stuff to the menu every single week to keep things fresh. They got everything you need, whether you're a rookie looking to dip your toe in or you're a grizzled vet that knows what you want and you want to be in and out of there fast. They got you. Mary J's offers competitive pricing. In fact, they're going to price match any store in Ottawa. That means you're guaranteed to get the best price around at a Mary J's location. They got the best customer service, too, by having the friendliest bud tenders who are always ready to help you out. In fact, one of the owners, Dashy, Absolute beauty, diehard Sens fan. You can usually find him at one of the four locations. So go to the stores, say what up to Dashy, ask him about who he wants the Sens to draft this year, and ask him about all the latest, greatest products that Mary J's has to offer. Check it out today, guys. Mary J's Dispensary. Today's episode is also brought to you by our good friends at Sleeper. Play daily fantasy at Sleeper, the number one place that we trust, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's Regardless of where we are in the standings, I just want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. Fans can also play Daily Fantasy in NFL, NBA, MLB, college football, all on Sleeper. With entries can be made in under a minute. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, Claude Giroux, Jake Sanderson will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and or more in a given game. To win up to 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sens fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your pick so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right, here he is, Dave Poulin. All right, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. It's his fourth time on the show, but first, as Senior Vice President, Hockey Operations with the Ottawa Senators, Dave Poulin, great to see you. How are you today, sir? I'm doing great, guys. Congratulations on a 1,000. That's a, I don't have a silver stick to present to you today, um, but I would in spirit because the thousand is a lot. And as you know, that's the commemorative emblem the National Hockey League gives you. And, and to start when you guys did too, and I feel like I might have been one of your first guests on those shows. And I was thinking of where my life was at that point, and certainly not thinking that a mere thousand episodes later, I'd be sitting in an office in Ottawa as a senior vice president of the Senators. So the twists and turns of life continue. Ninth guest ever on this show. I keep the list. Great. You're the ninth guest ever. It was <laughs> July 27th, 2020, Pooley. We're talking wow. four years ago, and we appreciate that. And not only do I know a silver stick is the commemorative thing, I actually inquired about buying one to honor the moment. Turns out they're five grand US each. So that yeah, was, was a quick say, conversation. Maybe it's your 2000th episode you do that on. Yeah. yeah that might yeah. be more fitting. That's awesome. Well, hey, I know everybody in Ottawa, we got to hear you on TSN 1200 on the morning show. Of course, everybody knows you from TSN all those years. I had the pleasure of working with you at times at uh, Leafs Lunch, and we can blur, blur out that word there, that L word. But uh, all jokes aside, what's the transition been like to, to this role here with the Senators? It's been tremendous. You would always, always love more wins uh, than losses. And the latest stretch has been tough. It got corrected there through, a, I believe, 10-3-3 three and three stretch we had right in the middle when everything was going well. And then a couple of injuries, Josh Norris out again, Tom Shabbat now out again. So um, it just hasn't all clicked at the same time. But from a transition standpoint, for me personally, uh, I've enjoyed it immensely. I'm, I guess, 10 weeks in now, which is um, a short period of time, but a long period of time as well and fully immersed in every aspect of it and really figuring out 
the pieces and how to work with Steve Steos and Ryan Bonus and the group that we have here and what your role is, how to coordinate Beth best with Sierra Leader on the other side and the business side. And there's just a lot of moving parts to it. I've, I've been involved in a lot of the different aspects before the finance, the HR, all those things you don't think about in running a company. Uh, I'm involved in from a hockey operations standpoint. Take us through a, a day in the life of uh, Dave Poole and working with the Ottawa Senators. What does a typical day look like for you, Pooley? Uh, they start early and I've always been an early morning guy. So uh, it's popping up real early and getting in the office ahead of it and getting a large coffee and, and getting to work. So just in a given day, a little bit of everything would be the only way to put it. I've been involved in meetings about naming rights. I've been involved with season ticket holders. I've been involved with uh, the coaches on a regular basis. You'll swing by the coaches. You'll talk about lineup. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to to go through a day because you're going to say, okay, you were in a finance meeting for an hour and a half. Then you were in an HR meeting for an hour. A lot of this is still get to know, um, really working on processes for the hockey team that, we would like to do on a regular basis as simple as, you know, how best to send somebody to Belleville, how best to call them up. I've been to Belleville, I visited David Bell and the group there and watched the game. Um, a little bit of pro scouting, a little bit of amateur scouting. Now the focus will turn post trade deadline to the amateur side. Steve Stales and I are headed out to see some of the top prospects and where we may fit in the draft and what that may look like. Um, meeting with the scouts have been in amateur meetings. I've been in pro meetings. And so to, to really touch on this, every aspect of the business operation, it's interesting, you know, with it, when you're talking to your buddies, because they don't, they think of running the hockey team. They don't think of running the business part of it. Yeah. And I'm involved in pretty much all aspects of both. So we know that you've had a long history with Steve Steos. Where did that all begin? Do you remember the first time you got to know him? Yeah, I do. The first time I met him was, he was still playing for the Islanders. I was with Brian Burke and I met him in the rink for the first time. And afterwards, Burke, he said, this is a guy that when he retires, um, we're going to grab and he's going to move back to the Toronto area and we're going to try and, and get him involved. And so Burke, brought him down to my office one day and he brought him in and he said, I know you guys have met briefly, but I'm reintroducing you. Um, Steve Stales meet Dave Poulin. Dave Poulin meets Steve Stales. And he said, okay, See you later. And he walked out, <laughs> I swear. And I, I remember laughing, looking at Steve going, okay, what do we do now? And Steve was like, I don't know. And so we chatted a lot about what he wanted to do. And, you know, the initial foray was into player development and looking at, you know, how best to work with our young players and how to move forward. And, and then he went and, and, you know, we continue to work closely together on all aspects of that. We were involved heavily with the Toronto Marlies through a good segment. And, and those Marlies teams played nine playoff rounds in our last three years together. So went to the finals, went to the conference finals, um, had good teams. And, and that's how it started with Steve and I. And then when he transitioned to Hamilton, Michael and I worked together on the American Hockey League Executive Committee. And for four years, and I actually followed him as the chair of the executive committee. So it was a chance to work with an elite group of owners, guys like Mark Chipman, um, like the Brooks brothers, like uh, Howard Dolgan, like Michael Andlauer. It was a great opportunity for me to work with elite people like that. So that's where I first got to know Michael. And then when Michael um, took over to Hamilton and moved the AHL team there, or the OHL team there rather, that's when he hired Steve from AHL to OHL. He hired Steve to run that. And Steve and I just kept in touch and just chatted on a regular basis about hockey. And I had moved into the management or the um, broadcasting side of things. So I was out of the management side. And, and then when everything started to happen in Ottawa, we kept in touch all the way along. What can you tell Sens fans about why Steve Steos is the right guy for the job? I mean, they did a GM search and ultimately d decided, you know what, They're, Steve Steos is going to take that position as well. How, how can you kind of uh, let Sens fans know that uh, this is the right guy? And is Steve, Steady Stevie Steos uh, an accurate nickname for him? <laughs> or is it fair to call him that? He seems he comes across that way. 
Well, he is. We have this new mantra in here, and uh, we used it through the trade de- trade deadline, rather, which I we kind of laugh because these two words do not go together, gentlemen. So, you know, as a English minor in college, you might cringe when you hear, but accelerating patience is the <laughs> term, and that's what you want to do. You want to be patient, but you want it to go quickly, and we are going to be patient, and this is about, I think, Steve's biggest strength is understanding the dynamics of building a hockey team and that, you know, and we have some pieces here, elite pieces, but some don't fit together, might be on a line, might be in a situation, uh, might be at a position where we have to reassess exactly what we have. And that's what we've been doing through this period of time. And I said, you know, as I mentioned, I've been here nine or 10 weeks, just evaluating what we have. And each night we look at it as a test. If we're going in the third period ahead, it's a great test. If we're going in behind, it's a great test. How are we going to adjust to back-to-backs? How are we going to adjust when our goalie isn't on top of his game that night? How are we going to adjust when special teams aren't clicking? And right now, you know, it has been a case of each night we, we find a different way not to be successful. It might be we don't get a key save. It might be, you know, the power play let us down. It might be we give up two power play goals. We've got to get everybody operating on the same level. And Josh, or Jacques Martin, rather, has done a tremendous job, a tremendous job coming in and, you know, really helping us out through this. He's patient. He's a teacher. You know, his staff with Jack Capuano. And I didn't know Daniel Alfredson at all, guys, you know, at all. Just to say hi to. Really enjoyed getting to know him. Uh, ben Sex is also a big part of that staff um, coming in. And... You know, and and taking reins and saying, okay, we're going through a transition period and Josh is, or why do I say Josh? I'm thinking of Josh Norris. Jock Martin is the interim coach, obviously, and taking us through a transition period. And is the plan, and and maybe this is unfair and feel free to to pass on it, but that Jock's going to stay a part of the organization after this year, but maybe more in a management role? That was the plan initially to come in in a coaching consulting role. and, And Jock was not coming in to be the head coach at that time. Yeah. And really helped us out by taking the reins there. So that would be the plan moving forward that Jacques will be a part of the organization. Amazing. Yeah, he just kind of gives, a, again, kind of similar to when you hear Steve Steos speak in the media. And that's kind of us as outsiders, what we get. But it's just that calm demeanor and feels like steady goes the ship when uh, when you guys all have your hands on it. Now, who's a, you mentioned not knowing Alfie too much as a, as a coach, but these players, I mean, you've seen them from the outside. Is there maybe a guy who caught your attention who maybe you didn't know too much about? We know the big name guys, but maybe a guy who, whether it's work ethic off the ice or somebody that caught your attention as you've been here for a few weeks? Yeah, I mean, you're impressed. This may be too obvious, but you're impressed with Brady Kachuk and the way he carries himself through the organization. You simply are. And you remind yourself how young he still is. You know, he is considered one of the older guys here. He's not. And just by tenure, he is, but but he's not. And, you know, he is. he wears the burden. He carries it heavily. I was a young captain in the NHL. I was a captain only my second year in the league. But I'd been through four years of college and a year in Europe. So... A little bit different in that standpoint. And, and what we have to do for Brady right now is get him more support in that leadership role. We've talked about it openly about, you know, bringing some players like a Claude Giroux in who's been a tremendous asset in terms of that leadership piece to help Brady out. Now, uh, I want to ask you about trade deadline, Pooley, because uh, a lot of Sens fans had big anticipation about this. Is there going to be a big splash or are they going to be patient? Uh, accelerating patience, as you mentioned. But I like that. I, I think a lot of Sens fans looked at this trade deadline and maybe were a little bit disappointed and frustrated that there wasn't that big move or a big return coming back. But what Steve Steos kind of portrayed to the media is, hey, maybe something didn't happen today, but we really did a lot of work understanding and evaluating our players, uh, learning from the league, the value that we have from our players, building upon conversations, Maybe you can just touch on how impactful that is. Maybe Sens fans, they don't see the results, but the impactfulness of the discussions and what that's building towards uh, for the future here of the talks you did have on the deadline. It's an important piece of it, that foundation laying. And I think what we have to understand, too, if you look around the league, there are a lot of young GMs. Yeah. There were a lot of guys going through that for the first time, a Craig Conroy, a Daniel, a Mike Greer, 
Um, you look at some of the guys, and you know, even Billy Garen hasn't been in the chair that long. Um, you look around the league, and the Montreal group um, has not been in their chairs for that long. Kent Hughes and, and that group, Jeff Gordon. And and then some guys are in new places, like a Brad Trilliving in Toronto and, you know, Patrick Alvin in Vancouver. And so I think those conversations, the trust factor has to grow amongst that group of Kyle Davidson in Chicago. You know, think of all the names that I'm going through, Bill Armstrong in Arizona, that are relatively new within the last couple of years, if not the first year through this. And so from that standpoint, it takes time to build trust and and you in your trade partner. And but there were things that we chatted about, combination things that maybe if there were multiple pieces, one of the pieces didn't work contractually. And you know, you just look at this screen now and say, okay, we'd like to trade these three players. Well, Brandon has a full no move clause. Ross has a no trade clause with 10 teams on it. They're earned though, Pooley. Yeah. And I and I've got a 16 team no trade clause. And so now you're going through and say, okay, so Ross can go to, we can move him for Brandon, but we can't move him for Dave because Dave has a no trade yeah. going the other way. Like it's really, it's, it's one of the first things you have to figure out is that piece of it. And then the next step is would a player be willing to waive that and to go to a certain place. And, and so there's a lot of restrictors, if you will, that are out of your control and, you know, we don't even get to salary cap yet. And if the pieces fit, and you have to bring the accountants in to see if the pieces fit. And, you know, Tim Patterson does a great job for us with that. I mean, he, he's at arm's distance because you need to know, you know, as you're talking about conversations, you know, the, the hands go up and like, okay, does that work? And if it works this year, does it work next year? Does it work with our two-year plan? Does it work with our three-year plan? So a lot of moving parts go into these deals. And that's why... As much as you'd say, okay, we well, had lots of time to prepare for trade deadline. Um, the word deadline does say, okay, you've got until then. And, and the proper conversations often don't pick up until, you know, there's a chance to run out of time. And fi fi final two for me, actually. But first one, was it more difficult to be as far away from home as possible for the deadline? What was the situation like? I know you huddled in uh, L.A. So the conversation would be, do you want to set up in Ottawa, which would be ideal, but or do you want to be close to the team so that if you do have to talk to a key person who was traded, you'd rather do that face to face. And that was our option. And, and once we got set up um, and moved through that segment, the one challenge, Ross, was being on the West Coast. And there's an early, you're an early morning coffee guy, though. Morning. You're all right with, okay. the, with the early morning. Yeah. Early morning is 4 a.m. if you're talking to somebody at 7 p.m. in the east. Yeah. Right. They, then the days grow long. You know, we're playing at night on those occasions. So, <laughs> excuse me, the days grow long. But um, from that standpoint, uh, that part of it, there's a reason the Wall Street guys move out west because they pick up three hours in their mind. <laughs> the market opens at 6.30 a.m. rather than 9.30. Yep. So um, it, you, there were a lot of conversations that started very early on those mornings. Coffee was a critical component. Oh, no doubt. Pooley, we really appreciate this. And, uh, I mean, just hearing from you, I'm sure Sens fans will have a sigh of relief, you know, going into the final 19 games. Last one from me. We're doing a top 80 draft prospects this year, <laughs> Pooley. We're going to dig our, our teeth into this. We're really looking forward to that. We know with the old regime, it was a lot about athleticism, about character. Like, what kind of players are you, Don Boyd, the whole organization, what kind of players are you looking to add through the amateur side come draft time in Vegas? Well, we've talked a lot about character and hockey sense, and we've talked about those components leading the way and then building through the rest of it. And we want hockey players. And, you know, we had great amateur meetings and, Sean Tierney's become a big part of our group and just watching the integration with him and the coaches because, or the coaches and, and with he and the scouts, because there's a, re a reticence amongst the old guard to embrace analytics in many regards. And the way he speaks about it and adds to the conversation, not confuses the conversation about two players, even the amateurs It's fascinating where, you know, you turn to Sean and say, okay, what about these two guys? You're comparing a, you know, somebody playing in, 
a 17 year old playing in Liga in Finland and an 18 year old playing in the Western Ho Hockey League. So, yeah. you know, trying to compare components in different worlds, um, that's what we're trying to do to integrate those factors. But we're looking for the best available hockey player. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds, Pooley. We really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds, Pooley. We really appreciate you taking some time to join us. And funny note here to, to end off on. Uh, when you were hired on December 31st, our views on the last time you were on the show doubled. So people were looking for anything you said about a player here or there. Everyone was trying to go with a fine tooth comb. So That's I just great. thought you'd have a laugh out of that, but really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to having you at the helm here in Ottawa for years to come. Thanks guys. Congratulations again. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. They got superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. So whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your money is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. It's that simple. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that dub. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Check it out today, guys. eBay Motors. All right, Pilsy. I just want to say thank you once again to Dave Poulin, truly one of the good guys in the game. And you can tell they know what the issues are surrounding that team. Pooley did not make mistakes, I don't think, with his broadcasting background in certain answers in particular there. The one I love the most, I gave him an open floor. One player that impressed you, no hesitation, Brady Kachuk. Yeah, I mean, uh, he knocked that one out of the park, and uh, I think the Sens management uh, have really been driving home the fact that whatever rumors come around Brady Kachuk, they're squashing those and uh, really amplifying that he is the guy and they're going to build around him. So that's what you love to hear if you're a Sense fan. We also got another best in class kind of mantra in there, accelerating patience, Pilsy. Yeah, I love that. That's how we got Bully on. We accelerated patience. It's true. Yeah, we really did. And uh, yeah, just Pooley is such a good guy. And obviously, selfishly for us, it's awesome that uh, a friend of the show is working high up in the sense. But e even if we didn't have that connection with him, he really seems like the right guy for that job. And he feels like the perfect fit with Steve Stavos. Like the two of them seem like they're really working uh, cohesively. And I think with time, they're going to be able to turn this thing around. And he joins an esteemed list of recurring guests on the leaderboard here. And I guess it is kind of a, a time that we can get into this just because it is the 1000th episode. So we only have a certain amount of guests who have been on four or more times. And Pooley has officially joined the ranks here with Mark Mathot, Ian Mendez, Scott Wheeler, Tony Ferrari, David Foote, Igor Sokolov, Angus Crookshank, Cheryl Pounder, Mad Sogard, Tyler Boucher, Jamie McLennan, and Dave Poulin. And Dave Poulin got to play a lot of his career with the Philadelphia Flyers, so he's no stranger to tonight's opponent for the Sens, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Pilsy, it's a game day. Usually we lead with that, but now, you know, with 19, 20 games left in the season, it feels like the storylines are more around the game rather than what is actually going to happen on the ice in terms of the end result. Yeah, especially when you look at the Pittsburgh Penguins, that's another team that's out of it here. So it's not like the Ottawa Senators can even play spoiler, which usually they they would relish the opportunity to do that up against the Pittsburgh Penguins. But it's, it's going to be an interesting game, Ross, because like, like Dave Poulin said, like at this point of the season, you got to be looking at how your team responds to certain situations, right? Like that's what he focused on when a bad goal gets in. Okay. It doesn't really matter whether this team wins or lose this game, honestly, but 
how is your team going to react if, if the power play is not clicking? How do you bounce back from that? Th- things like that that you're going to be checking out. And this is a Pittsburgh team. Make no doubt about it. Sure, they're down in the standings. They traded away Jake Gensel. Uh, they didn't add anyone, which is a very new position for um, this franchise since Sidney Crosby's been there. They haven't really been sellers. But you're going to see how they react here. And they have a lot of good veterans. You look at guys like Crosby, Malkin, Latang, Carlson, obviously. Uh, so this is still a team with some heavy hitters that you can't take lightly. Oh, that's a thing. And they've obviously had Ottawa's number historically, although it was a pretty fun game. It was the one I joined you from Hawaii for the postcast where Tim Stutzla scored in overtime. So maybe he can reinvent that magic because he actually remember he went, I think it was two years ago where he hadn't scored in like the first 18 games of the season. And then he scored against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So slump buster. I know Timmy has has gotten on the board. He's already kind of slump busted with the San Jose Sharks getting his first power play goal of the season. Yep. But to me, that's my locked on player tonight is Tim Stutzel. The Senators are going to be on the ice like 10 minutes from now. So we're going to miss the lines. I would expect Corpusalo to get the start here. Um, but for me, it's just a matter of looking at at the lines and 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 just kind of picking certain players that I'm hoping have good rest of the years in terms of milestones. I know Drake Batherson is at his total goals from last year. His next one will yep. set a career high for him. So I'm watching for that. I want Brady to at least hit 30 goals, if not more. He's at 27 and Timmy's at 15 goals. Man, that's low considering he had 39 last year. He's been obviously snake bitten of late, getting chances. So um, those are some of the things that I'm going to be watching for tonight. But I think we would be we would be making fun of ourselves if we did keys to the game. <laughs> sure, that's fine. We don't need to do keys to the game. Uh, my locked on player is going to be Brady Kachuk. You look at a guy; he's the leader of this team. He's going up against a Pittsburgh Penguin team that's had this franchise's number for a long time there's a lot of great veteran players on the other side of the rink there so I want to see Brady show that leadership and show hey even though we're down and and out of this we still have pride and we still have a lot to work for and we're trying to improve and we're going to show up here especially a home game in Ottawa so you want to see the captain show up and he's been one of the players since in this stretch I I still feel like Brady's been giving it his all so you got to have a lot of respect there uh, and Ross, are we going to do lookout players? Cause I got some interesting stats here. Okay. So I'll transition that to my lookout player from one captain to the next Sidney Crosby, number 87, heard of him. He tough will be, stretch. he will be my, uh, lookout player. Has he been on a tough stretch? Oh, pr- probably one of the toughest of his career in his last five games. He has one assist and he's minus 11. Oh God! I wish I wish you didn't say that, Ross. I, I'm gonna run the Fanduel and bet on Sidney Crosby here because Ross Sidney Crosby enters tonight's game with 57 points in 48 games versus the the Senators, and he's just one point shy from surpassing Jeremy Yager for the most points against the Ottawa Senators in franchise history. You think Sidney Crosby's not gonna get that tonight? You're wild. Sidney Crosby's getting a point, and he is going to hold the record for most points up against the Ottawa Senators franchise in history. Jeez. That's going to happen. You know that's going to happen. That's that's tough. The only thing, Ross, it cannot happen on a Carlson goal. No. If, if we if that is how this happens, I don't... I don't know how I'm going to be able to handle myself. Or a Chris Kunitz goal, but I guess we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> we'll bleep that out. Yeah, we, we'll bleep that out, <laughs> no question. Uh, we will have the postcast tonight. Pilsy's going solo tonight. Yeah. It'll be a little different, but uh, hey, we're we're going to get you the postcast. One of the, my favorite parts about the postcast is the chat, so we want to make sure that that's available to you guys. And um, look, we're, we're going to be here for you every step of the way here down the stretch and uh, into the draft rankings. And what, uh, what I'm also looking forward to, and I've been fiddling around with the draft rankings graphic and everything like that, I'm excited about the draft after upon further review, there's a lot of good players here and uh, I'm looking forward to Ottawa to grab a couple. And you just got a little hint from Dave pool and that they will be focusing on hockey sense as one of the biggest uh, attractors to who Ottawa will pick. So lots to look forward to, including tonight's seven o'clock start a reminder too, if you're going to the game, the Glebe central pub shuttle will be heading to the game tonight, leaving an hour and 15 minutes before the game. And then it will bring you right back 
to the to the Glebe Central Pub after the game. Pilsy, any final thoughts on what's been an awesome 1,000th episode of Locked On Sands? Whew, it still feels good to hear hear that 1,000 episodes. Uh, th- this is a milestone for us. We've been working towards this for a while. Karma worked on our side. We we thought, oh, man, we're not going to be able to, to get the guests we want. But sure, Cooley came through for us in the morning. Exceptional guy. We, we can't thank him enough. And again, I'll just echo the fact that we, we are so appreciative of everyone that supports this show. It's crazy to me that we are a part of people's daily routine. Like when the episode comes late and we get flooded with messages, hey, where's the episode? It's not on Spotify. It's not on Apple Podcasts. Like it's... It's so awesome to hear that people care that much. And uh, that's a big part of the reason why we grind because um, we looked back, Ross, when we were in school and we were like, we're so sick of Sportsnet, TSN, always talking about the Leafs, the Habs, and you never cover the sense. So we said, we want to be the ones that cover the sense. We want to cover it the way sense fans deserve and the way we feel like this team should be covered. So that's what we, we've been doing. That's what we are doing. And that's what we will continue to do for you. I love it. I love hearing that because, I mean, that's kind of growing up. We didn't have that option. It was like you're yep. either Channel 27 for Sportsnet, Channel 30 for TSN, or you could have 52 for the score as well. But now you can just go on to YouTube and you can click in Locked On Senators. And we want to make sure to continue to put all these different voices on, whether it's prospects like Vladimir Nikitin last week, whether it's fun stories around the hockey world like Abby Murphy or whether it's the big dogs like Tim Stutzla, Jake Sanderson, or upper management as well. We got to get Steve Steos as our next white whale here now that we've been able to yep. reconnect with Pilsy. So all those Hooli. will... Hooli. What did I say? You said now that we've been able to reconnect with Pilsy, we'll get uh-huh. Steos on. I'll, I'll call Steve for you, Ross. Dude, how about Pooley giving us a no trade clause? I appreciated that. Just like to point out I had the full no trade clause. <laughs> All right. Let us know in the comments. What's been your favorite episode of Locked On Senators? I'm curious to hear that. I probably should have led the show with that, but we got too excited here doing what we love to do, and that is entertain and interact with all you sickos out there who take solace in the fact that misery loves company, and there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is. There has to be. But for today, we say goodbye for Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the 1,000th edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day.